Hello friends welcome on our channel Forklift Tech Tutorials. Today videos explain about a forklift battery and how to check it. Let's start the video if you are new on our channel, please subscribe our channel. Forklift batteries should be checked regularly to ensure they are fit and safe to use. The frequency of these checks depends on the application and frequency of use and charging. Before commencing with a battery inspection, we should have understanding of different components of a forklift battery. Now provides you with an overview of the main parts of a forklift battery. Forklift battery connector The forklift battery connector is used to connect the battery to the forklift or the battery to the charger. The connectors can be split into two main types. Flat style Euro DIN battery connector harness The battery connector harness includes the battery connector, cable and takeoffs from the positive and negative terminals. Many batteries used on modern forklifts are now supplied with a cable harness that is molded as one piece and includes the connector, these are called molded REMA connectors, or MRC for short. Forklift battery cells A forklift battery is made up of two V cells. A 24 V battery will have 12 cells, and a 48 V battery will have 24 cells. The cells are joined in series with intercell connectors to make the total voltage of the battery. Often when a battery fails it is due to a single cell, so cell replacement is possible. Intercell connectors and bolts Intercell connectors join the battery cells in series to make the full voltage of the battery. In the US the intercell connectors are predominantly rigid and welded to the cell posts. In Europe and most of the rest of the world, the connectors are flexible and are bolted to the cell posts. The bolted version makes replacement of the connector or cell a simple process, without the need of specialist equipment. Battery tray or tank The battery cells are contained within a tray or tank. The tank is made from metal which is paint applied on the inside and out. Most trays are coated with a plastic paint that is acid resistant. Many trays fail due to battery acid getting into the tray, so having it painted in an acid resistant paint is very beneficial. The most of trays have drain holes, designed to drain off any water from the tray, which is accumulated from cleaning or topping of the battery. If the battery trays do not have holes, any liquid that is spilt in the tray would need to be removed with a suction drainage pump. The tray will normally have lifting holes on either side, where lifting hooks can be placed. Packing material Packing material in the batteries is used between the cells and tank to ensure the tight fitting of the cells into the tray. This prevents the cells moving during operation which could cause damage of the cells, tray or connectors. Battery electrolyte monitor Most new batteries now come complete with a battery electrolyte monitor. Forklift batteries lose water during operation and charging, the electrolyte monitors inform you when it is time to top a battery and help to ensure against battery dry out. Vent cap or battery filling system The water lost during use and charging needs to be replaced, so the cell's vent caps are designed to enable water to be added. The water can be added to each cell individually, or a plumbed and battery filling system can be added, which enables the cells to be filled at the same time, which saves time and is safer for the operator. Battery inspection before every use of forklift battery should be inspected for the following. Electrolyte levels. Check the electrolyte level in the cells to ensure that there is sufficient liquid to cover the cell plates. It is best to check the levels at the end of charge, and the battery should be topped accordingly. Read our full guide on adding water to a forklift battery. Inspect cables and connectors. Inspect the battery cables and forklift battery connectors for signs of damage, heating melting or swelling. During use it is easy to drop a connector or trap the harness in a battery cover. This can damage it exposing the metal cable or contacts. Check the cable insulation for signs of damage if there are any signs of melting, then do not use the battery until it has had a professional inspection. It could be a sign of a severe fault and may cause a fire. Inspect the connector contacts for signs of pitting. This is caused by arcing on the contact tips if the battery is disconnect from the charger whilst charging. Check that the cable is securely fixed in the connector contacts. It is normal for the contacts to be crimped onto the cable or to a lesser degree that may be soldered. Swelling on flexible intercell connectors, this is due to acid ingress if the cable is damaged. Swollen intercell connectors should be replaced. Vent caps or battery filling system. Each of the battery cells will be fitted with a vent cap or a battery filling system. Check to ensure these are securely in place and not damaged. With a battery filling system each of the batter cells will be installed with a watering valve, each valve will be connected in series by tubing. Check the valves and tubing for damage. Battery electrolyte monitors. Most modern batteries come with an electrolyte monitor installed. The monitor will have two small cables attaching it to cell terminals. Check the monitor and cables for damage or signs of corrosion. Battery cleanliness. 
most forklift work in dusty environments. During charging water vapor can be given off which can settle on the cell lids and cause any dust to stick. Over time this can be sufficient to cause tracking across the battery. Over time the tracking causes the battery to self-discharge. Specific gravity and cell voltage. The specific gravity and voltage of each cell should be periodically checked and recorded. Both the specific gravity and voltage of the cells should be taken after the battery has been charged. The specific gravity should be in the region of 1.275 to 1.295. When the battery is discharged the specific gravity will decrease to around 1.100. The open circuit voltage OCV, of a cell when fully charged should be 2.1 V equalization charge. The battery should at a suitable interval be given an equalization charge. An equalization charge is in effect a deliberate overcharge of the battery and lasts for an additional 3 hours on top of the normal charge. The purpose is to remove any buildup of sulfates on the battery plate.